Hello. So in this class today we will study here about the concept of virtualization. So in computing, what does this term virtualization here refer to? So virtualization in computing refers to the act of creating something virtual. Rather than creating something actual, it means we have to create a virtual instance of something or we can say virtual version of something which includes your virtual computer hardware platform or your virtual operating system or your virtual storage or your virtual computer network resources. So that means it refers to the act of creating something virtual that means creating virtual instances of uh, various versions of your computing system here. So that means we can create virtual hardwares, virtual operating systems and your virtual storage devices here. So that means this is just an instance of a particular hardware, instance of particular operating system or instance of your storage device or your other network uh, computer resources here. So these are your what these are your instances. These are instances. So these are not here actual. So that means we are virtualizing all those things which are required here in your computing system. So that refers to the act of here creating a virtual version of something rather than creating an actual thing. So basically we can say that we have here like the separation of the operating system from your hardware. That means you can use multiple operating systems on one hardware. Now various examples here are like your VMware, your MS virtual PC, hypervisor or your virtual box which enables your virtualization platform. So it is a technology here to run multiple we can say multiple same or different operating systems on one system which are completely isolated from each other. That means if I have here one system, so it can have many virtual instances of various operating systems here. So that means uh, you can run Windows or Linux here on same medium. So that means you don't have to have two separate hardwares for using Linux, Ubuntu or your Windows 8 or your Windows XP. You can use their instances on your one medium, on your one media. So we can say your virtualization is one of the hardware reducing cost saving and energy saving technology that is rapidly changing the IT landscape and fundamentally changing the computing ways. So that means if it is reducing our hardware, so hardware here or energy efficiency, so it can be used here for the bigger purposes for your computing resources and storage resources here. So that means you don't have to employ more of the hardware for using more different applications here. So we can here see two systems like before virtualization and after the simple virtualization. So if I have here one, like I'm saying what I will have before virtualization and then what will I have after virtualization. So first of all before virtualization what you will have you will have single operating system per machine and then it implies that 
the software and the hardware here is tightly coupled to each other. That means this is here dependent on this. One machine is having only your one operating system and all the applications will be running on this operating system here. So that means running multiple applications on same machines after some time creates conflicts or reducing the speed of your system here. So that means you have such kind of scenario for this like you have your uh, system architecture like here 8086 CPU architecture here so you will have like your CPU your memories your network interface cards your disks and everything here so after this architecture what you will have you will have your operating system installed this will be your operating system here and after that on this operating systems you will have the different applications here so this happens before your virtualization single machine single operating system software and hardware are tightly coupled and running number of applications here can create conflict slow down your system now what will happen after virtualization now after virtualization you will have single machine your single system but you can have multiple operating systems here that means in this single machine i can use my Windows 7, Windows 8 or my Linux. So earlier, before virtualization, that means I should have three different hardwares here if I want to use that. But with virtualization on my single machine, I can have here three different instances of these operating systems here. So and each of these operating system will be isolated from each other. And that means to, they are not conflicting here with one another. So that means the system, this virtualized system is here hardware independent. So because we are separating these operating systems here from this hardware here. So that means it can manage different operating systems. So we can run different applications on our system. So single unit. So that means it can manage operating systems, applications, single unit by encapsulating them into that virtual machine. So that means if I have a host system and I'm, for example, my host here is Windows 7 and I want to use Linux. So the Windows 7 will be my host machine and the Linux here will become my guest machine. So it will be separately running its application and the Windows 7 here will be running separately its application. So what we have, the difference what lies in the implementation here is like this. What I will have? I will have my this 86 architecture here having the CPU, NICs, etc. But now here after this architecture, I had my operating system installed installed here but what i will have with my virtualization i will have my vmware virtualization layer here and i can simply write here i will have then my virtualization layer here. after this 886 architecture so that means between the operating system and this hardware i will have an virtualization layer enabled so after my virtualization layer i will have my operating systems i can have here my host os and other operating systems that means the instance of these operating systems which will be separately running here their applications the particular 
applications here. So we can say that we have separated these operating system, the instance of this operating system from this, this hardware by enabling here a virtualization of your hypervisor layer between this and this here. That means we have separated here the operating system from the hardware. So that means these particular instances which I can create on my one systems, I can refer them as VMs, my virtual machines. Like with your virtual box, you can install in your uh, systems here. So if you're using any host operating systems like your Windows 7, so after that you can uh, use Linux here. So that will become your virtual machine. So every time you will open your system, so it will ask you that uh, which interface you would like to use. So when you will be using Windows 7, it will act like it's in different system. And when you will be using Linux on your system, that will be a separate system. So these instances are referred as your virtual machine. So this virtual machine here is a software computer that is like your another physical computer that runs the operating system and the applications there. So this is installed here as a guest operating system. And here I can have my host operating system also. Now, after that, uh, we have here that what are the different kind of installations here? We have two different uh, kind of hypervisor layers here. So next, we have the hypervisor layer, which is used here to enable the virtualization. So what I can say is that now, Hypervisor. So, hypervisor is a software layer between the hardware and the operating system here. Hypervisor is your a software layer between the hardware and the operating system. Now, acting as an intermediary layer, so it will interact with the hardware and the resources and provide an interface to share that resource. So that means it is acting here as an interface to share the resources of the hardware. So we have two implementations for this. One is bare metal and another one is hosted. First one is your bare metal and second one is your hosted one. So basically we have like hosted type using but we can use the bare metal also. So what happens in your bare metal system you have in hosted first of all you will have a host operating system but in bare metal you will not have any host operated system so that means if this is your computer system you will not have any host operating system here you can you will directly have the hypervisor on your hardware and then you can have the various operating systems instances here in the system so i can like put it here in diagrammatic representation that you have this architecture here then you have your hypervisor here and then you will have your virtual machine one virtual machine two and another virtual machines here. so on these virtual machines you will have your like the operating system of course so you will have your different applications running here but the concept is different here for your hosted one. So in hosted one, what you have? You have your computer system. On the computer system, first of all, you will have an host operating system here. Now after that host operating system, then you will have this hypervisor layer. And then after this, you can create the virtual machines here. So for this, I will 
have like 8086 architecture i will have my host operating system then i have my virtualization layer now my host operating system will be running its application differently but after my host op application layer for this now i will have my virtualization and after that i will have my guest operating systems and their certain applications there so this provides or this technology here comes with number of uh, benefits here like legacy of hardware migration a controlled management system that means we have we can reduce the number of hardware if you want to use like multiple applications here now this virtualization here is of different kinds that means hardware virtualization then you have uh, desktop virtualization server virtualization and application virtualization so we have different uh, five different categories here for this uh, virtualization here so first of all we have the hardware virtualization hardware virtualization so hardware virtualization refers to the creation of a virtual machine that is like a real computer with a real operating system so that means i will have a virtualized hardware on on my system like if my i can say this is my one physical machine but simultaneously i can uh, use xp or linux so this will become another system so i'm creating here another physical device with an operating system it will act like is a real device performing its own function here so software which are executed here on these virtual machine is separated from the underlying hardware resources that's why we can share these resources but with the help of that hypervisor there as it acts as an interface between these two entities here so host machine is the actual machine on which the virtualization takes place and guest machine is your virtualization machine so like your amazon uh, web services here are providing the ways or uh, enabling various virtualization technologies here now after that after my hardware virtualization i have desktop virtualization desktop virtualization so desktop virtualization basically refers to the concept of separating the logical desktop from the physical machine your desktop virtualization refers to the separating of what we are talking here about desktop so that means we have to create a virtualized uh, desktop here so what we will be doing in this we will be separating your logical or we can simply say your desktop from the physical machine so that means what does the separation here means the separation here means that rather than interacting with this host computer directly now i will be working there on for desktop so that means directly i don't want to communicate with that particular physical machine or that with host computer like i'm at this place so i can enable desktop virtualization if someone sitting on a remote location can access this logical desktop with some other hardware here so this is what is this refers to is that it we can interact rather than interacting with this desktop or with this host computer directly via keyboard or mouse the user here interacts with this desktop using another mobile device by the means of network communication like your lan or your internet system here so this basically is that we can access these log uh, logical desktops here from your server locate uh, different 
remote locations also so that means user desktop runs on these data service as virtual machine so that means it will be if that is accessible to some another user here so it will be acting as a virtual machine there that means a virtualized view of your desktop like we have citrix uh, zen desktop or your microsoft vdi so microsoft vdi here refers to virtual desktop infrastructure or we have vmware view or like most commonly like we use here like your team viewer in which we can access the system or access the desktop so this vdi which is your virtual desktop infrastructure so this is the practice of hosting a desktop operating system within that machine but centrally control, uh, controlled here by some another server so this is basically we're separating this desktop this physical machine that means someone else can also access this if we have enabled this desktop virtualization so these uh, desktop virtualization solutions are provided by different kind of softwares then we have server virtualization so server virtualization is the partitioning of your physical servers into small virtual servers server virtualization refers to the partition the, that means we are dividing here a, one big server into smaller number of physical servers so that it helps in maximizing the server resources for example we have a microsoft hyper b or red hat server virtualization so that means if you have a complete system in which you have your arm like this is your system here this architecture your hypervisor layer then your different uh, this operating system then your instance of different operating systems so what have you will have different instances of these virtual servers also you will have different uh, instances of these virtual servers also so one common uh, example here is like your web server so these web servers using these can provide low cost web hosting services so instead of uh, having separate web servers we can have many instances of these virtual servers here so that means we can create the various instances of your small virtual servers also after server virtualization what we have is your application virtualization application virtualization now what happens with your application virtualization so that means we don't need to have the applications within one system so that means the instance of the application here can be provided so that means the different business applications or another different applications which are uh, located here in remote data centers they can be accessed so that means we will have the virtual instance of these applications also so this is basically the practice of running a software from a remote server rather than on the user's computer in your application virtualization what we have that we can run a software which is on a remote server on a remote data center rather than i'm having that application or that software on my system here so that means we have here uh, remote services so that means you have remote application so remote application is running on a different servers so end user can view it and interact with the application over a network via remote display protocols so the remote application can be completely integrated with the user's desktop so that it behaves 
as a normal application. So that means for a particular instance of time with the help of my internet services, I can access that application or software and can use as a normal application on my system here. Like some of the uh, examples or applications here for application virtualization is like streaming applications. So that means the virtualized application is executed on the end user's computer. So when an application is requested, the components are downloaded on demand. Once downloaded, that streaming application can function here. So it is the separation. Your application virtualization here is the separation of the installation of an application from client. So you are not separately installing that, but that application will be provided on demand. So that means we have here certain programs which are designed for such specific instances of your applications. So these are the four different kinds of virtualization techniques here, which can be implemented here with the various like your hypervisor or your virtualization layers so this virtualization can be used to provide your cloud computing virtualization is used to provide cloud computing i'm saying that it is just used to provide cloud computing but both of these are not same because cloud computing can act as an component of your uh, because this cloud computing is a service but your virtualization is an infrastructure so that's how your virtualization can act as one of the components of the cloud computing both of these are not same thing these are different this is an service we have like clouds on demand also, but this adds or it can, as it is an infrastructure service, so this is how it can be here used to deploy your cloud services. So this is all here about your virtualization. We will discuss about cloud computing in our next classes. Thank you so much.